Shalom guys, welcome back to another episode of the Shavu Ministries with Casa de Israel Yarat. Thank you again for being there. Like I always say, if you like the content that we are putting up on our channel, like, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, put it in the comment section down below. So, we're going to continue, or at least for this book of uh, Exodus or Shemot, uh, we're going to end uh, with the last uh, portion, uh, to our portion, Pekudei. Uh, the last portion that we uploaded was Kititsa, right? So we transitioned from um, the presentation of what we talked about last time, the Shabbat, right? The Shabbat becomes that uh, part in creation where uh, God rests, right? He is refreshed. And then in uh, Torah portion Kititsa, he talks about how the Shabbat becomes an element of refreshment for us, right? And for creation to be connected back to our, uh, I guess, our original design, right? Our original source of life. And that's what we are trying to, in many ways, uh, connect to, right? We're trying to go back to uh, that fullness of life that fulfills us, right? That, that element that fulfills the emptiness in our lives at a, a certain point of our lives, so that we are missing something we feel like we are in need we're in in uh, desiring or, or seeking something that is missing out of our lives right in, in the bible uh god presents that as his word uh and through uh the shabbat he is able to introduce to us uh a an element that brings us back to the essence of us connecting to him right so in this portion uh we're gonna mainly review uh we're gonna mainly review uh elements and topics that we talked about a year ago with Torah portion Vayachel Pekude which was two in one this year is divided by Torah portion Vayachel and Torah portion Pekude right so today we're gonna close out the book uh review and prepare ourselves to enter the book of Vaikra, the book of Leviticus, the book that nobody wants to study and read. Okay, so let's get started. Like I said, we're going to be in Torah portion Pekudei, which is in Exodus 38, verse 21 to Exodus 40, verse 38. The Haftarah or the prophet's portion is 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 51 to chapter 8, verse 21. And the Brik Hadesha or New Testament portion is Luke chapter 1. Verse uh, chapter 16, verse 1 through 13. Parashat Pekudei is the final portion of Sefer Shemot, or the book of Shemot, of Exodus. It begins with Moses' accounting of all the materials that were donated for the construction of the Mishkan, the tabernacle. Moses first recorded the inventory of different building materials and furnishings, and then he carefully checked the special priestly garments. After all, the work was confirmed to be in complete accordance with the Lord's instruction. Moses blessed the people. And so, here's a depiction of uh, what the tabernacle would be. And the priests will be able to minister in the, in the, in the tabernacle, right? So, this is what uh, we, have been, we have been talking about or reading about, right? We have been talking about the Ark of the Covenant. We've been talking about the curtains. Um, we've been talking about the altar of incense. We're talking about the table of of the of shoebread, the menorah, the um, the curtains, uh, the laver, the altar uh, of, of the offerings that, that of burnt offerings, and also another, I guess, uh, curtain or entrance. Then this is the courtyard, right? So all of this is what we've been. Uh, learning about how were they were going to be built, by who they were going to be built, the materials that were going to use to build these things, and the registration of each instruction step by step, so that we have a, a nearness to the design. Because remember, the image that we're looking at, right, at least is the essence of what the heavenly abode looks like, right? So these detailed instructions, and remember that only the people that were allowed to bring the materials and build were the only ones that had any type of access to the structure, right? Once the structure was erected, nobody was able to see these things and, and have, uh, have a, a firm look at them because when they were erected, 
it was covered by the curtains and where when it was dismantled it was supposed to be covered so that it could be transported right so the people were were, were not able to see um uh as much of these elements as we would think right especially in our times where we have pictures uh, uh videos and stuff like that in those times they'd have none of those things right so uh these written documents that later were able to be presented and read to the community where the glimpses of what was in this uh, amazing abode where the presence of god manifested itself right so let's continue so last time we reviewed that this structure was built uh by human hands right the humanity was able to build a a, a structure so that they could learn to draw near the deity right but in this case the structure had to be built according to what god instructed step by step detail by detail um and by the people that god instructed to do it so okay uh, another picture and this is something that we are learning that we are erecting the tabernacle where the presence of god is going to be manifested from the inside out right so everything had to be perfectly aligned from the inside out right which uh, is is a beautiful lesson that we learn for our lives um, another picture it says this is how it starts these are the amounts of the materials used for the tabernacle the tabernacle of the covenant law which were recorded at moses command by the levites under the direction of itamar son of aaron the priest bezalel son of uri the son of ur of the tribe of Judah made everything the Lord commanded Moses okay so these are men in the tribe of Judah who are building these elements and bringing them into fruition now chapter 40 verse 1 through 10 says then the Lord said to Moses set up the tabernacle the tent of meeting on the first day of the first month place the ark of the covenant law in it and shield the ark with the curtain bring the table and set out uh, what belongs on it then bring in the lampstand and set out up the last the lamps place the gold altar of incense in front of the ark of the covenant law and put the curtain at the entrance of the tabernacle place the altar of burnt offering in front of the entrance to the tabernacle the tent of meeting place the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it set up the courtyard around it and put the curtain at the entrance to the courtyard Take the anointed oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it. Consecrate it and all its furnishings, and it will be holy. Then anoint the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils. Consecrate the altar, and it will be most holy. And so, that is the detail uh, words that God gave, right? Which dictate to us that this uh, structure. Um, that was built by human agency with the spirit of God, with wisdom and fear of the Lord, now has become wholly separated for the service and the manifestation of God's image. Because remember, the priest that will be working, uh, serving in the tabernacle are the ones that provide us the image of God, and they are the ones that bring our offerings and our presence into the tabernacle. Because remember, we can't go in there. The people couldn't go. The people couldn't see those elements. They were outside. They had no access, right? And this is a little bit of a, a, a image of Adam and Eve, right? They were casted out of the garden, right? So humanity now has no access into the holies of holies and uh, or the holy place or anything inside the sacred space as long as they stay contaminated or as long as they stay in a sinful uh, state, right? So now with the commandments, now with the uh, instructions, now with the priest and the and the laws of purity and holiness, they can start to re, in a way, restructure and reestablish their presence in the presence of God, right? Their ability to get near again to the tree of life right the same way that in the in the garden there was uh cherubim that were put to protect the tree of life now in the ark 
we see Cherubin protecting the Torah, the, the, the tablets, uh, and the mana, right? And eventually the, uh, the staff of Aaron. And these are the ones that give access to the tree of life, okay? So it's very interesting how, it, in a way, it foreshadows those things that teach us of, in a way, our iniquities and the reasons why we can go in, but at the same time, the privilege that we have in the structure to learn to draw near again to that sacred space, okay? And so, the tabernacle is holy. We're learning that it's consecrated once it's erected based on the structure and uh, instructions given to Moses, it is perfect. Okay. Now, <coughs> erecting the tabernacle, Moses receives divine instructions to set up the tabernacle and put each item in its assigned place. He personally is charged with this task because the entire enterprise is said to be based on a celestial image or a prototype that had been shown to him on Mount Sinai. So he becomes the witness. Constructing the house of God. While the mass of repetitive material on the instructions and construction of the tabernacle, comprising 13 of the remaining ex, uh, 16 chapters of Exodus, may be redeemed uh, tedious according to modern sensibilities. Yet from the ancient Near Eastern perspective, this concentration manifestly brings one to the heart indeed, to the drama itself of the narrative. This material is better appreciated by having in mind the psalmist meditation on the blessedness of the dwelling in the house of God. Okay, And it says, Psalm 84, this is something that we read before, verse 1 through 4 says, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns. Right, and This is something that we talked about last time with Shabbat. Right? Shabbat is a refreshment, is a, a revitalizing of the soul, the essence of, of life that was given to Adam in, in Genesis, right? How when God gave him the breath of life through his nostrils, the nefesh, right? Here in the house, we're, we're presented with the ability to um, reenact or re-manifest God breathing life into our nostrils again, right? We go from walking in death to walking in life. And so we have an ability to be in his presence and his holiness. And so this tabernacle became, becomes that. Every element, every every uh, part of it gives us a, a, a glimpse, gives us an, a, an, an access to the heavenly abode. It says, my soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrows has found a home and the uh, swallows a, a nest for herself where she may have her young and place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. So the essence of the materials is giving us in a way a imagery. And obviously in our time, we're able to, you know, depict it place it in, in, in pictures and in videos and, and have a, a, a glimpse of what it could have been or what it was like. Um, and it's beautiful because we have a privilege to not only see it uh, and, and, and touch elements of it and learn and have that access that not a lot of people had in those times and recognize that now we don't have a heart of stone, but we have a heart of flesh that we are able to learn from the lessons that our forefathers didn't learn from, okay? Now, <clears throat> this is something from the book of, um, let me show you, I'm gonna get it right now. So one of the books that I've studied, and it's a very good book, Who Shall Ascend to the Mountain of the Lord? This is by uh, Michael Morales, okay? Very good book. And he depicts um, this transition that we have, right? We have a transition from Eden to, to Mount Sinai uh, and to the tabernacle. Abraham is also in this mix. But we see how in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, okay? And so from there, we see that God said, let there be light which was life. John tells us that the light was life to all men. We see that in Yeshua manifested, but in the case of creation, it was Adam. And Adam becomes that priest 
on top of that mountain and Eden becomes a support, right? In Egypt, we went back to chaos, just like in the beginning, right? In the beginning was chaotic, boom, perfect creation, order. We had the elements put into, into order. We put Adam as the, the uh, administrator in, e, uh, in, in Eden is the sacred space, okay, where we um, are in the presence of God. But we sin, so we go back into Egypt, chaos, right? Now, to uh, Moses, from the chaos, we will go back to Mount Sinai where we receive the commandments, where we receive the structures, where we receive the revelation of what is sin, right? Sin is transgression of the law, right? Transgression of what law? God's law, God's instruction. Uh, Moses in the mountain brings us back to life, to structure, to order. Uh, and Moses, in this case, becomes the administrator of this. But I, in, 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 in the axis of the mountain, now God wants to not only tell us that if we have faith in him, which is in the mountain, now we were able to take that and, uh, and, and, and uh, manifest that image out there in the world, right? It's not stuck to the mountain because the mountain, uh, it cannot contain him, right? But now God gives us the instructions, illustrations, detailed instructions, will, which in this case become chaotic, right? Because the instructions, even though they're detailed to the new people that are receiving it, it's chaotic because it, it takes us to change, to rebuild, right? To redefine, okay? And so from there, from these instructions, we have the tabernacle. And now we have the high priest and how we're going to go into the presence of God and how we're going to uh, manifest our our repentance, our love, our, our gratitude, right? How we're going to carry ourselves, how we're going to maintain ourselves pure and holy, not only in God's presence, but in the presence of, of, of other people, right? The nations, okay? So here we're presented with this. Now, the series of instructions for the components of the tabernacle is made up of seven subsections, each of which is introduced by the formula the Lord spoke and said to Moses. Six of them deal with creativity, and the seventh features the Shabbat law. Okay, so this is something that we learned uh, from creation, and now we also have learned in the past uh, portions. Now, the portion closes the following way. And the cloud covered the tent of meeting. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle in all the travels of the Israelites. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day and the fire was in the cloud by night in the sight of all the Israelites during the, of their travels. The presence is manifested in the tabernacle, okay? And the presence is, uh, in a way, presenting itself and, and fulfilling its desire of bringing God's presence amongst the people, okay? And so the idea is for God to be amongst the people and be our God and to be in our midst, so that the world can see that uh, Yod Hebabe is our God and we are his people. Okay? So that is key to um, the covenant, right? God's presence amongst us is a testimony of our obedience and his support. Okay? So 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 6 say. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them. And the rock was their Messiah. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as an example to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. And so this portion 
of Exodus and the exit of the book and entering the book of Vayikra now says that Moses cannot go into the, the tent because the cloud is in the midst of the tent and is in a way accepted the uh, erecting of the tabernacle itself. Now we're going to learn how to not only access the tabernacle, but maintain our presence in the tabernacle, right? In his presence and maintain the presence of God among us. Okay. And these books are here to teach us what was commanded and what was disobeyed by the people so that we are able to learn the registration of the elements, the details help us understand how uh, responsible God held Moses and how um, they had to be filled with wisdom and fear of the Lord and the spirit to manifest his presence amongst them. Because what manifested God's presence was not the structure, but their hearts willing to obey God's instructions. That's all I got for this week. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.